The horse. Okay, guys, let me just uh, make a uh, kibberach. Nice relax, kibberach. Okay, so just kind of feel your stance. All the way through is kind of just uh, rotate. Like if you imagine this is, we're going to face either side. So this is hand me, and then we're going to rotate into shoulder to your left. And then change, rotate shoulder to your right. Okay, just try to kind of feel that mobility that you have. So just go from shoulder to your one side, rotating around, shoulder to the other, and just keep on. Kind of getting that, trying to feel that kind of range of motion within your within your movement, yeah? Go for it guys, a couple of minutes. Well not a couple of minutes, 30 seconds. Paul Doherty's gone full dogey tonight. Whoa! How clean is that belt? Yeah. <laughs> the belt is very clean. Okay. Guys, feel, feel, try, try not to kind of go with your upper body. Try to make sure it's only driven from that hip rotation. So, so it's like, like don't, don't kind of go like, oh, I've got this much, but then I'll kind of compensate with my upper body. Like sometimes we do that, but just, just try to kind of maximize that range, that range of your hip. Like your upper body will tell a little bit, but don't over, over exaggerate, yeah? Just keep on rotating. Feel in a thigh muscles, no, sorry, not in the thigh muscles. Feel, feel like the connection with your, with your ball of your foot through your instep. Can you go in against that and then change it? Exactly, and change it. Just keep on rotating, yeah? Go from that extreme. 30 more seconds. Yeah, yeah, good. Don't, uh, don't, don't kind of like twist into it. Try to push, yeah? So you're not like using your upper body kind of movement. You're just kind of slowly moving into one point, maximum rotation and change other, yeah? Of course, watch those knees, yeah? Whole point of this is, is kind of feeling, feeling that, feeling that rotation and that point of maximum rotation uh, without it kind of destroying your stance. Understand? Plus. Okay, good. Okay, okay guys, nice and slow. Just punching Jakazuki in. Jakazuki. And then change knee. And sand. She go like don't think that you're kind of making Kimmy or doing this fast. Just make sure you're trying to kind of move through that kind of range of motion slowly and mindfully. Yeah, okay. Each knee sand connect that punch with your back leg. Yeah, she go rock shit nice and slow. Yeah, ha. Cool. And you're. Okay, guys, a couple of more minutes, yeah? What I don't want, what, okay, we watch from the side. What I don't want you to do is kind of hit that point, then punch across your body, yeah? Whatever you're doing, like you're rotating with your hip, you're rotating with your body, whatever kind of 90 degree position or 90 degree position you're, you are in, you're punching to that point. So your punch is 90 degrees to your, to your chest, yeah? Don't kind of punch across your chest, artificially punch to the side, yeah? Just see how far you can get round, and then change around the way, yeah? Okay, one more minute, try. Manage that stance, guys, yeah? Make sure you're kind of really focusing on your, on your, uh, your knee, your, your back leg knee. You punch into your left, then your right leg, yeah? Linda, don't lean back so much, yeah? Uh, just you know, make sure your your heels are out, yeah? Don't push your knees out, push your heels out. Inner thigh muscles squeeze. Take your body with it, guys. Don't rotate around. Okay, again, just watch. Don't rotate around your central axis. Not, so, like, you're not moving this way, right? Rotate around your hip joints. So, so I'm pushing with my right leg. I'm going to rotate around my, my left hip. I'm feeling that right leg push. I'm feeling the ball of my foot, my instep, connecting to that, that point, yeah? So I'm, I'm rotating around this left hip. Then I'm going to change. I'm going to come back to neutral feeling. And then I'm going to rotate to my right, right hip as I punch to my left. So each time I'm having a sense of shifting my body mass around either one side of my one hip or the other. Okay? Yes. Vivian, why have you got your camera off? I can't see what you're doing. Then head up, back straight, Nick and Matthew. Not Matthew, sorry, Chris. Chris Matthews. Okay. 
Okay, good. Okay, next guys. Next. What I want you to do is feel feel like you're you're like when you're when you're going to your extreme at this point, yeah? There's a lot of pressure here. I want you to start with this squeeze. This squeeze of your inner thigh muscle, which pulls your hip back and then rotate. So feel like you're opening this part here, yeah? All I want you to do is pull. Pull that hip, that inner thigh muscle. Squeeze that hip up thigh muscle and then drive. Squeeze that inner thigh muscle, then drive. Still not fast, yeah? It's just, just get that feeling. Inner thigh muscle, squeeze and then rotate round that. Understand? It's still not fast, guys. That, like the, maybe that initial movement of squeezing your inner thigh muscle, which is kind of initiating the movement, and then let, let the, the punch kind of flow naturally, smoothly. Slowly, yeah? Then, Matthew, don't punch across your body, yeah? Come on, Ben, you're young and flexible. Get right the way around. Knees bend, though. Sink in your stance, Ben. Good. Okay, okay, so, next one, guys. I want you to, I want you to feel like, like you're using both legs to, to punch. So from here, you kind of stretch that part of your, your body. You stretch your, your kind of open your hip, and you stretch your thigh, yeah? I want you to squeeze, squeeze your inner thigh muscle, which is initiating the movement, and then you're gonna add the other leg. So I'm gonna squeeze here, and then drive here. Squeeze to start, drive to finish. Squeeze to start, drive to finish. So I'm squeezing my inner thigh muscle of my opposite leg before I drive here. I'm not just focusing on my driving leg. I'm focusing on the initiation. The initiation to the drive. The initiation to the drive. You understand? Try and get the timing right. That's why we've been doing it slowly so you get the timing. Don't, don't kind of rush it and get the timing wrong. Sit down in your stance, guys. Matthew, your knees are a little bit too much out. You'll be damaging your knees, yeah, that way. Then Barry, it looks like your stance is a little bit too long. A little bit short and knees bend a little bit more. Initiate it from that, that opposite leg, yeah? If you're gonna punch with your right hand to your left, initiate it with your left leg, then drive with your right leg. Or if you're punching with your left hand, initiate it with your right leg, then drive with your left. Okay. Okay, yeah, man. Okay, guys, do you understand what we're doing? Yeah? So, like, what I'm trying to get you to do is kind of almost orchestrate tension within your body. So, you know, like, we can, we can separate and, and, uh, and kind of, like, think about, like, how our arm works, how our leg works, how our hip works. And we, we often do that within karate, yeah? We decide, dissect body parts and we go, okay, you're going to do this, you go, et cetera, et cetera. But actually, that's just conceptual stuff. Like, the reality is that all our body is connected. It's all our body is connected through kind of um, this kind of elastic web of, of fascia, yeah? And so, so we're just kind of, it's not true that your, your muscles are connected to your, your bones through ligaments. That is true. But your all, muscles are also connected to other muscles. So, so, for example, like, if I tense my inner thigh muscle here, then it's connected to the rest of my body. I can't do that without it affecting the rest of my body. Then I can resist it, but ultimately, I want to use that initial compression of my inner thigh muscle here to initiate the whole of my body. So from this stretch, I can feel that kind of coming across here as I'm kind of maintaining my stance, and that orchestrated tension I'm going to use to initiate this next technique. That orchestrated tension I'm going to use to, to initiate the next technique. I'm not going to let it be floppy. I'm going to release. I'm going to tense that part to kind of create that tension around my abdomen to drive that, that leg. Do you understand? Yes? Okay, good. Okay, let's try. Uh, like, well, okay, one minute, guys. Just try it by yourself and then we'll do a spin par. Okay, go for it, guys. You okay, Jim? <laughs> Just taking a break. Try to maintain stance stability, though, throughout it, yeah? Try to maintain that structure of your stance. Just in a bit of a wobbly stance there, yeah? 
Okay, let's try swing power. Okay, so like I just said, so just seen a kind of a bit of a wobbly stance. That's when there's too much tension there, yeah? Like the structure of your stance is not just a shape, it's a way of kind of stretching your body and having that potential, potential kind of uh, explosive power within your stance. Just like a bow, yeah? If you've got a bow and arrow, the bow is pulled taut and you, and you pull it uh, more and it becomes more kind of pull, pulled and bent and it's that potential energy that you use to release the arrow, yeah? Well, this is the same, especially Kibidachi, it has, even has that shape of a, of a bow, yeah? So feel like you're stretching. The moment that your stance kind of gives way, you lose that integrity of your stance. It's not just a shape, it's a way of kind of stretching and, and kind of bowing your body in order to produce potential energy, yeah? Okay, let's try it, guys. Start with your left hand out. Oh, sorry, right hand out to your left. Okay, feel that tension. You're going to initiate it from this leg. Okay, hit. Knee. Sun. Sheep. Go. Look. Chitch. Hunch. Kum. Jo. Okay, I'm I relax. Then make sure it kind of affects your, your hip and your body, yeah? If it's just your upper body, your shoulder, your arm going, then you're not taking your body mass, yeah? You want, you want that tension in your hip to pull all your body round, not just your shoulder, because then you're not going to take your body mass with it. Okay? Okay, okay, next one, guys. From here. Okay, just a left hand out. Hi, Shuke. Just like take your shot on, yeah? Okay, then we're going to make MP try it. Then release knee. Okay, make high shuke. Okay, mawashi MP. Itch. Knee. And then MP. No, it's just high shuke, yeah? Okay, itch. Knee. And then relax. And then shi. And then relax. And go look. And relax. And shi. And then relax. And go jo. Okay, understand? Okay. Okay, just uh, 30 seconds, guys. Do that. Let me see what you're doing. So, more shampoo to double hickey tape. Okay. Okay, yeah, man. So, look. Um, like, there's, you know, like, obviously, in taking short on, in taking short on, then, then, I mean, we're not doing taking, we're just, I'm just using this as a, as a, a, a training tool, yeah? But in taking short on, you can, like, it becomes really horrible when people, this all which comes about upper body and they're like this, and they're, they're kind of going in with their shoulder and coming down with their hands, and you can, you can just see physically, it's a, they're, they're moving their, their arms and that's it, okay? What's really nice sometimes is when, when people are really moving dynamically from the core, and, and, and that's what I want you to focus on today, yeah? So, so from here, Again, that same feeling, you're driving that, that leg and you're rotating your hip. It's not about your upper body, it's just about that lower body. And then from here, I want you to kind of squeeze your inner thigh muscle. Squeeze your inner thigh muscle to get to this double hickey tape. Not pull your hands down. Not relax. This part of your body is relaxing, but this part of your body is tensing in order to come back to neutral. So this, this completely stretch in and tensing here to come back to neutral again. And you get that kind of rapid, feeling of, of this moving, yeah? And then you can only get that rapid movement through relaxation. If it's about your upper body, you're tense, and you're not gonna ever kind of reach that kind of speed. Do you understand? Yes. Okay, give it a go, guys, try. If you've got any questions, just ask. Although, 25 minutes into the class, no one said a word yet. Yes, Katie. Yes. Are you, when you go back into high shiki, then releasing the tension, like re yeah. Yeah, like, like high shuke just go from a neutral position where nothing's particularly engaged. Uh, you know, neither in Shoma nor Hamley. You can still recreate it, but like it's a bit more difficult to kind of get that feeling from, from that neutral position, yeah? Of course. Yes. So in your catchy, when you do this uh, movement, your, your kibadechi position, your legs are a bit moving then. Your, your thigh, so, so obviously your, your stance is from your knees down, so hopefully your knees aren't moving, but your legs, your thighs, that's not your stance, so that can move. So like, like for example, if you think about the, uh, uh, Zenkuk stance, like Zenkuk stance, my knees down move, don't move, but like if I make Hamley, this thigh moves a lot. You know, this is shifting backwards and forwards. So in the same vein, in Kibirach, this can move, a I mean, it's only going to move a little bit just because of the structure of the stance. But ultimately, your knees, 
knees down, stay still. Above your knees, you can move as much as what as you want. Okay? Okay. 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 Okay, yeah, man. So guys, we're going to, we're going to try this uh, spin power in a minute, but like, one thing I want to point out, it doesn't really matter about how inflexible your, your, uh, your hips are with this movement. It's not about how much you can get your hip round in, in order to kind of face 90 degrees to the direction of your stance. It's not that at all. It's about maintaining the integrity of your stance. And I'm just like saying to Susanna, from your knees down, like maintain this, uh, let me get this. Maintain this integrity of your stance. So, so when you're rotating, like that knees down is, is, is solid. And it's just a matter of tension in, in this part of your body to create that movement. And as soon as you start kind of fast twitching that, this feeling, then you get that kind of rapid uh, movement that you can see in, in good performances of taking shorter. Understand? Okay, okay, so one count, guys. One count, this one, two, and then slowly high shuke again, yeah? Okay, let's try. You ready? Yeah, it's knee, sun, chi, go, look, chit, hunch, come, one more, jump. Okay, I'm here. I used to know, relax. Good. Then, guys, when you start kind of getting used to this movement, where you are kind of tensing one part of your body in order to create another part of your body to move, or certainly to initiate your technique, yeah? Uh, then, then you can start using this stretch short cycle because like, this is a good example of what we've just done. If you, if you think, okay, I've just, um, I, I've just kind of rotated this way, then in order for me to rotate that way, this, this part of my leg has to stretch. As my hip is rotating, this part of my thigh is stretching. And so on that maximum stretch, then you tense and you get this stretch shortened cycle. You know, when we use this stretch shortened cycle all the time, you know, I give you, if you want to create an explosive motion, you don't just kind of uh, tense your bicep. It's much better if you tense your bicep as it's being stretched. And if you stretch your bicep and then, and then tense it, you're going to create a, a lot more explosive power. It's called a stretch shortened cycle. And so once you start doing that, you start to kind of produce much more explosive power. So not only are you using that kind of like that connection points to kind of initiate the technique, you're also using it in that kind of stretch short and cycle manner. Understand? Any questions? No? Okay. Okay. Okay, next one. Uh, let me just, uh, okay. Everybody from here, just uh, make a zenk stretch. Zenk stretch. Okay. Then nice relax, guys. Nice relax. All I want you to do is just practice mawashi geri and coming back as best you can, yeah? As best you can, I want you to kick mawashi geri and come back to the same spot. So you're kicking round and coming back. Okay, try it. Okay, knee. Sam. Shi. Go. Ra. Shit. Hot. Cool. Jaw. Okay. Okay, change leg, guys. Then remember the most important thing at this, I want you to really think about, is, is the snap of the kick. Not the rotation, not the ability to get your body mass in, but just the snap of your kick. So you're snapping and coming back in, in a smooth manner, yeah? Okay, try left leg slowly. Okay, each knee kicking and back. Sam, she, go, rook, shit, hatch, cool, one more, jaw. Okay, good. Okay, guys, I want you to just kind of play about with this for a couple of minutes. Like, what I want you to try to do is have the smoothest possible kind of snapping back as, as possible. So, so I want you to play about with a couple of things. Firstly, I want you to play about with, um, with your supporting leg. How much is that leg turning? Okay, uh, quite a lot of you are kind of, you know, that 
basic morsi gary and we're not practicing kind of morsi gary per se we're practicing kind of like this kind of enforced kind of stiffness within your body so so you know normal morsi gary you turn your foot in order to facilitate kind of hip rotation don't do that i want you to kind of limit the amount of rotation of your supporting leg without of course putting excess pressure on your knee okay and what that will do is you'll kind of you kind of stretch your body in order to help you return back like if you, if you think about if I keep my foot still and I rotate my body round, that foot naturally wants to release back in, or that back foot wants to release out, yeah? I'll show you from this angle. If I rotate in, this is kind of an awkward position for me, so naturally I want to release from there. I'll either release by releasing that supporting leg, or I will release it by just coming back. So using that, and you show that up with kind of like a engagement of your muscles, and then maybe you kind of get to the point where this easily snaps around and back. You understand? So just try to use that. Try not to use your upper body so much, just that supporting leg and the structure of that connection. Okay, try guys. Guys, kicking forward and kicking with your foot completely over and your complete hip completely engaged is not the is not the goal of the exercise, yeah? In that traditional Mawashi Gary sense. Okay, goal of exercise is just kind of feeling that engaged contraction. And the more your foot goes round, the more like shore up that sort of inner thigh muscle of your supporting leg. So naturally you're gonna come back, yeah? Then you squeeze and come back through. It's all about this supporting leg that you really want to focus on. Okay, both, make sure both sides guys, both sides. Try not to have a tense upper body, relax your upper body as you're kicking, coming round. Okay, okay, good. Okay, so, so guys, from normal leg touch, then like you're kind of practicing to the extreme, yeah? All I want you to do is, is, is kind of, we're gonna do three kicks, and we'll see, see where you are, yeah? I want you to kick 45 degrees. So like 45 degrees coming back, maintaining that easy kind of like uh, engaged position. So 45 degrees kind of get on height. And then a little bit more around, like wherever it is, kind of uh, 80 degrees, 70 degrees at Tudor. And then 90 or directly in front of you, uh, at, if you can, Jordan. So we're going, we're going 45 to get on. And then 70 uh, Tudor. And then Jordan, 90 degrees. So and like each time shore up that supporting leg. So it's kind of anchoring you back to this point. So this, this is easy, you'll easily come back to this point, yeah? This one's a little bit more difficult because of this supporting leg and flexibility. This one a little bit more difficult, but each time try to have the same feeling. Understand? Okay, let's just try. Okay, three counts, yeah? First, get down, 45, itch. Two down, 70, knee. Jaw down, 90, sound. Okay, itch. Knee, sound. Feel that tension in your supporting leg, yeah? Hitch. Knee. Sa. Okay, one more. Try not to make it about your upper body. Hitch. Knee. Sa. Okay, everyone understand? Okay, try that guys, both sides. Try to change leg, do it the other leg a couple of times, see how you get on, yeah? Try not to use your upper body, guys, as much as possible. Only about your leg, and especially your supporting leg. That's where the structure is. Okay. Okay, good. Any 
Any questions, you understand? Oops. Yeah? Is, Ma is this just an exercise, or will we keep probably my Gary? Should we be shoring up the supporting there? Well, we're doing more shigeri, Matthew. I meant more shigeri. <laughs> I know you. Uh, this is just an exercise. For sure, this is just an exercise. Okay, what I'm trying to get you to get that feeling is that, is that like sometimes, like so often we, we conceptualize the body as muscles connected to bioligaments to your bones. So like the, you've got that skeletal structure of your body and we work around that skeleton. But actually, it, going beyond that, every single muscle is connected to every other muscle. So sometimes in order to, in order to kind of move one limb, sometimes you can, you can engage muscle elsewhere in your body that will affect it. And so what I'm trying to get you to do is, is really, like in this sense, with the Mawashigeri, it's the hikiash, the, re, you know, the, the coming back is the difficult part. Well, it's difficult to kind of come back just using your leg muscles, but by using your supporting leg muscles to shore up that kind of fight against that body rotation at the right time, then it'll help your body come back. And more importantly, as a result, greater snap. And so try to keep that greater snap in, in, the, in this context. And then once you do that, you can use it in lots of other situations, yeah? But it's just trying to get that feeling into your karate. Okay? Okay. Okay, let's try, guys. Let's try. So, so one count, yeah? One count, we're going, we're going, Gidan, Chudan, Jordan, back. Understand? Okay, one count, let's try. It's. And D. Each time, come back the same course, yeah? Chi! Don't use your hands, Sam. Go! Tighter preparation, Annette, for your motion carry. Look! Chi! Yeah, Gerard, nice, nice, Gerard. Ha! Last one. Nice. Hip Christian, hip. My Christian, not co Christian. Okay, change, change leg. Okay, eight more guys, eight more. Okay, each. So take your whole body with you, yeah? Don't, don't kick with your bum out, yeah? Make sure it's your hip every single time. Okay, eight. Even the Jordan, yeah? Try to come back the same course. No! Use your ball of foot kicking, Caitlin, yeah? Not, not top of foot. Hatch! Is it shit, was it? One more! Hatch, yeah! Nice! Hey, I mean, I said that. Good! Okay. So, like, a couple of caveats, yeah? Firstly, like, you know, you, when you're rotating against your supporting leg in such a way, especially when you're kicking Jordan forward, like, uh, well, maybe I should have said this before, but, like, obviously, you know, you're putting your knee under a lot of strain. So you can only should, only should do that as you get greater and greater strength and control of your, of your uh, knee and, and, you know, muscles around your knee and, and so on. So you need great strength to do this, yeah? And once you can do that, you get greater awareness and, and ability to, to use this kind of principle. So step by step. So it's like, don't, don't kind of... Um, like some of you, I saw, you, you know, you're kicking on the third one and you're stepping forward afterwards and then coming back. Yeah, so be it, yeah? Start Gidan, 45 degrees. Go to Chudan, 70 degrees. Go to, uh, you know, Joran, 90 degrees. Step by step. Understand? Of course. Good. Okay, okay, we'll do one more exercise then we'll, then we'll uh, move on, yeah? Uh, any questions so far? Everybody okay? Everybody's good? Okay. Okay, okay, guys, just uh, left leg forward and just leg up and back. Just uh, try to maintain my getty position. Don't just swing your leg, but like as if you're kicking my getty, but just swinging your leg up as if you were, as if as if that position for my getty was going right the way up and back down. Yeah. Okay. Try it. Knee. Sam. She. Go. Okay. Change leg. It. Knee. Sam. She go rock. Okay, good. 
Okay, I want you to try a couple of times. This time, I want you to feel that your leg is leading to a punch. One, two, one. Just loose for now, yeah? No real kimme, but leg up, punch. Leg up, punch. Try other side, leg up, punch feet. Understand? Give it a go, guys. So opposite leg, Linda, opposite, opposite leg, opposite hand. Left leg, right hand, or right leg, left hand. Okay, okay, yeah, mate, just gotta watch, guys. Avoid the temptation of actually punching. I don't want you to kind of, with effort, punch. I don't want you to lift your leg up and then punch. I want this consequence of this leg to force this hand out without any sort of kind of me producing it with my upper body. I want you to feel it's that, it's that feeling that is sending my hand out. That feeling. Rather than, like it's, it's kind of, for me it's obviously different, yeah? Just try to allow, allow your body, your expansion, contraction of your body to produce the punch. Rather than your chest and your tricep, wherever it is, yeah? Don't hold your body tense, guys. Don't hold your body tense like this, because then it won't be transferred. Relax, whip, whip feeling, yeah? Whip feeling. And relax, not stiff. Yeah, that's it, Shane, not bad, yeah, not bad. Okay, okay, guys, can you, like, do you understand? These understand. Do you understand? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Have you got any questions, ask now. No, nope, everything's good. Dane's good, 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 good. Okay, so, like, I mean, the real temptation, right? The real temptation is just to kind of put Kime there, yeah? Well, sometimes you've got to kind of just feel your body, feel your body whipping and letting it come out without tension. And, like, if you can produce movement in your limb, because you've tensed another part of your body, or at least help, help to produce movements in your limb because you've tensed another part of your body, and therefore reducing the amount of tension in your limb, then you're going to increase speed. So speed is a function of relaxation, and speed produces power, yeah? The faster you move, the more power you're going to create. So it's all about trying to switch off as many group, any many muscles as possible. Like you found your shape of what you want, how can you do that with, by stripping away effort? Like they, they do a lot of this in yoga, yeah? You, you kind of find your shape and then you strip away effort and you, and you focus on another part of your body to produce stretching, to produce kind of an expansion of, of, of another element of your body that you're trying to stretch, yeah? It happens in yoga all the time. And we, should, and we do that in karate, yeah? Where we are just simply using something else to produce that technique. Understand? Yeah, okay. Okay, good. So... Make it a ju Kamaya. Yeah? So all we're doing is my Yeri. Then, then it's that Hikiyash. Hikiyash. That is produced in the Kizamazuki. So, nice, relax. My Yeri Kizamazuki feeling, yeah? All you're doing is my Yeri Kizamazuki. And it's the Hikiyash pulling of your hip, pulling of your hip that's producing the Oi Kizamazuki. Okay, try that, guys. Try. My Yeri Kizamazuki. Don't feel like you have to make a big yoriash on the Kizamazuki. You're not kind of sliding in, uh, but at the same time, you're not static either. You're not just kicking and then punching as you step back, yeah? Okay. Okay, guys, just watch, 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 watch. Look, if I'm gonna, like, in, well, in this case anyway, I'm gonna kick my Geri. And I'm gonna kind of kick through my guard, of course, but I'm going to kind of come a little bit square. I'm certainly not going to kick in, in and maintaining this shizen. My hips are neutral, okay? I'm not going to maintain this position. I'm going to rotate 
in as I produce that Malgeri, right? Now, as I do that, my upper body's gonna do the same, itch. Maybe I'll keep my Kamai, but ultimately my, my hips and my shoulders are square on as I release that kick. Now, as I pull back my kick, my hips gonna come back. That doesn't mean I have to kind of pull back my shoulders. I can, I can keep square on with my shoulders, but I can pull back my hip. And I can feel that kind of stretch across my back and it kind of stretches across my chest as well. As you're literally kind of creating this kind of torque within your body, right? Now I'm using that to produce the Kizamazuki. So I'm from this point, I'm, kick, I'm kicking my Geri, I'm allowing my lower body to come back, which then sends that tension in a wave into my upper body, which I release from Kizamazuki. Understand? It's quite difficult to show on Zoom. Why did I choose to teach this? Ross! Why did I choose to teach this? Awesome. Try guys, try. If you got any questions, ask. I have another question. Okay, go for it, Suzanne. First, I had the impression that I, I was, while I was punching, I was moving back. But yep. then when the, uh, the hips are in the position, I have less of this moving back impression on my right so you have less moving back impression, is that what you said? Yeah, when my hip is showing. Yeah. I, I don't quite know what you mean, sorry, say that again. Yeah. yeah, well, when I first did the exercise, I had really the impression to move back in, while I, I, I was punching, ah. instead of, instead of uh, having a, a punch. Yeah. You mean, you mean when we were doing this, just this leg lift and then doing this? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, the, uh, this one. I had, I had the impression to move back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So don't, don't synchronize. Don't synchronize. Okay. <laughs> Ross is saying everybody, Ross is saying everybody is just looking at the big screen. Everyone is doing what you're doing, Suzanne. Uh, look. Okay, yummy! Yummy! Okay, don't, <laughs> don't synchronize. Don't synchronize your hips and your shoulders. Like so often in karate, right? That's what we do. We synchronize upper body and lower body. We rotate, rotate. This, we are not rotating. So my hip, my leg is going back. My hip is going back, but like my upper body isn't. And it creates tension there. And then as soon as, as soon as that foot lands, I'm using that as an anchor point to release. So I'm going, like it's very difficult to slow it down, but I'm kicking, anchor point, hips going back, and then releasing out. So I'm having this sense of, of kicking, releasing out. You understand? If, if you synchronize hip and shoulder, then your punch, your body weight will go back as you punch. Don't, Syn don't synchronize. Don't synchronize and then release for Kizamazuki. You got it? Suzanne, you got it? Yeah. I can't see, but okay. <laughs> yeah, well, that's it, Suzanne. That's it, that's it. That feeling. Some of you have got it, some of you haven't. Who? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Gagi. Gagi's got it, Gagi's got it apparently. Yeah yeah, 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 okay, Gagi, here. Yeah. Okay, let's try a swing part. Okay, so, like, it's such a subtle thing, yeah? I, I, it's really difficult, it's really subtle. So, I understand if you're not getting it straight away, best thing to do is take your time, get it right. It's about timing, it's about kind of having that stretch in your body. And once you get that stretch, you can start increasing the speed, like I said, and you can start using that stretch shortened cycle to produce explosive power. Well, like, just get a feeling first. Okay, let's try, so Juke Kamai, yeah? Juke Kamai, this is my give me wrong, because I'm a Zuki thing. Okay, it's... Knee... Sun... Chi... Roar... Uh, no! Uh, shit! One more, ha! Okay, good! Okay, change leg! 
The left leg rounds and in each knee. Sound. Chi. Do. Look. Shit. And hot. Okay, I'm hey. I guess I'm dead. I relax. Good. Good. Guys, like once you get that feeling, then you can you feel it all the time in your karate. And what it is, it's about it's about being relaxed and allowing your body to stretch. If you're tense, of course, as soon as you engage your muscles, it's very difficult for them to stretch. You have to be relaxed, yeah? As soon as they start relaxing, you can start stretching it, and then you get you feel that kind of connection around your body. So when you're doing when you're making tension with one part of your body, it affects the other part. And you can use that to kind of add that extra dimension to your karate, especially on the initiation of a technique. Most people can do the last 50%, well not most people, you get some random beginner off the street and you teach them a, a basic technique, the last 50% of that technique will probably be as fast as a, a black belt. Okay, but it's that initial 50% uh, that you have to work on and then the initial, you know, 25%, initial 10%, until eventually you're just working on that initial 5%, 1% of the technique, and it's about that initiation. Starting fast, everything else takes care of itself. Understand? Yep, okay, good. Okay, we've got, uh, well, we've got 10 minutes, perhaps so 7 minutes. Okay, guys, uh, I think uh, we're going to finish with uh, Tiki Shoran, only because uh, Tiki Shoran is a great example of this kata where you're using kind of lots of, uh, of this feeling. So we're just going to go through it a couple of times, I'm not going to teach it, uh, uh, we're just going to go through it a couple of times, I just want you to get that feeling of the kata. Understand? Okay. Okay. Okay, you're nice relaxed. Okay, take a shot. Okay, by count. Okay, each knee. San, shi, go, rock, shi, ha, shi, ko, jo. Each knee. San, shi, go, rock, shi, ha, shi, ko, jo, each. Nee san, well she go, go shit hat, go, jo inch. Hey, hi. Hey, Harax. Good. Okay. Obviously, you might be challenged in the space that you have, but just try your best. Okay, guys, let's just try. We've got a couple of minutes, so we're going to just break it down a little bit. Okay, let's just try this Namiyash, yeah? So. So we'll go from this part. Okay, so first we're, we're looking, yeah? We're, we're looking and then as we do, you can rotate your hips, feel that stretch. This leg's gonna come up, but feel that stretch. And that stretch is gonna produce that hip, hip pull. And as you do, as you do, your leg's coming up. So this, each knee, this one, two, then infinite. You've got this stretch, okay? You're gonna pull, pull before you go in. Understand? So stretch first, then release. Stretch first, then release. Okay, just try that guys, a couple of times, give it a go. Guys, don't make this, okay, okay, you're right. Don't make this about you having to lift your leg. You know, so make it about stretching, stretching this part of your body, and then from that stretch, rapidly closing it. Rapidly closing that to produce the namiyash. So from here, rapidly close and release. And this is already open. Rapidly close. From that stretch, shorten. Stretch, shorten to, to go. From that stretch, shorten to go. So you're having that stretching of your thigh muscle, shorten it to produce the namiyash, rather than you lifting your leg. Okay? Then uh, Richard, Richard, uh, Beth, make sure you keep that structure of your stance though, yeah? The moment you lose the structure of your stance, it's like a bow that kind of breaks. You want to, you know, the, the bow is only as strong as it, as it maintains its structure, right? So that's your structure of your stance, is your bow, and then you're stretching it and then releasing. Then, uh, Jin, horizontal rotation. 
horizontal rotation, yeah? Not, not this rotation, only this rotation for this, yeah? Okay. Otherwise it'll, it'll knock your whole it stance out of whack. Okay, okay, good. Okay, next one guys, next one. Okay, let's try, let's try this, this thing, yeah? One, two. So, so from here, you can try both sides, yeah? But from here, try, from here this stretch, stretch the hip, hip, from, from this open point, yeah? You can use this as one unit, but try hip first. Hip, hip to the Yurakan. Oh, like there's lots of different ways to do this, yeah? Your Orizuki or Yurakan, yeah? But, okay, watch from this side, yeah? So from here, rather than hip and hand, hip and hand together, that's fine, but the speed that you're going to create is quite limited. Try hip go, hip go, hip go, and allow that hand to snap upwards. So as your hand is coming back, your hip is already starting to go forward to produce that snap. Understand? Try. We kind of almost have it. Then, okay, yame, yame, guys. Then remember, look, you're in kibrach. The amount that you can rotate your hip compared to the amount that you can move your arm, your hand. I mean, your hand, the amount that you can move your hand, the, the range, spectrum of movement you got there, the, is is the maximum, right? Then your your elbows a bit less, your shoulders a bit less, torso is a bit less, and your hips the smallest, right? So you got kind of like you know one small kind of cog, then a bigger cog, and then a bigger cog, and then a much bigger cog, right? So they're all joined together. And the, and the moment that you, um, I mean, a cog is a, probably a bad analogy, but, you know, the moment that you kind of rotate one, it'll start to rotate the other. And this one's moving at much, much greater speed. And so allow your hip to come back to initiate this top cog, so to speak. And then, and then before this top cog is finished moving back, you then counter-rotate your bottom cog in order to whip that forward. So, I mean, that's probably a horrible analogy, sorry. But, but like, the, the, you know, from here... I'm thinking this hip is coming back to initiate this namiash, this namiash, right? But before this namiash is finished, this hip is going back forward again to produce this snap. So like my hip movement is very kind of sharp and small. By definition, it's small hip movement during kibrach. But my upper body is quite big, but it's producing a lot more speed because firstly it's relaxed. I'm not using my upper body to create this movement. I'm using my lower body and that kind of wave of actual movement is, is kind of coming out a lot faster at this big movement of my hand. Do you understand? Don't try and shorten it. Make the, maximize this movement, but make it fast. Maximize this movement to make it fast as well. Then Christian, maintain that stance, yeah? Maintain that stance because uh, the moment that you start using your hip and it, and it rocks your foundation, then everything doesn't kind of match up. That anchor point, imagine, imagine there's a line of, of fascia going from your big toe right the way to this fist. And that's what's ultimately, that's what's pulling this fist forward is the connection point to that floor. And the moment that this starts to buckle, the moment that you start to lose connection, the moment that you can only use your hand, your muscles to move them. If you got, if you maintain that solid connection, boom, boom, then this is going to be a lot more whippy and relaxed, yeah. Okay, good. Perfection has been reached. That's very hard with a big belly. Very hard with a belly. It's hard with a big belly. Okay, okay, guys, we're going to do techie shot one more time to finish off the evening, and then if you have any questions. You can ask them, not that you, well, you can ask them anytime, but not now, because we're going to do take a shot. Okay? Okay. Okay, yo, let's try all the way through speed and power. Okay. Okay, yo, yeah.
guys? Last chance, any questions? Yes, go for it, Brian. Can you explain the thing with the biceps again? Sure. My biceps are huge. Oh, no, not that thing. The other thing. Okay. Um, so, in order to create that movement, I'm going to tense my bicep. Right, muscles can only relax or tense. They can't expand. They do expand as a result of other muscles contracting. So, so muscles only contract. And it's the contraction of my bicep that produces that arm movement. Okay? Now, I can create fairly explosive power by going from this relaxed position to contraction. Relax, contraction. However, if my arm is straightening, as in my tricep is contracting, therefore straightening my arm, and therefore as a result, my bicep is expanding. And at that point, I contract. So I'm... I'm I'm opening my arm and then I contract. Then the power you create is far more explosive. Stronger, faster, explosive power. And this is called the stretch shorten cycle. The, if you think about my bicep, stretch shorten cycle. So anytime, anytime that you want to use your muscles in an explosive manner, it's much better for them to be expanding. And the only way that they can expand, of course, is another muscle contracting. So if they're expanding before you contract them, it produces a lot more explosive power. Stretch, shorten cycle. We use that all the time. It's basic plyometrics. If you ever done any plyometric work, it's basic plyometrics. Suzanne. Yeah, but doing that, can we say that our karate is more snapped? Well, I, I, I can say my karate is like, you know, like Bruce Lee was famously, famously said, you know, like, karate is like her. I'm not going to do the accent. Uh, <laughs> no, sorry. Uh, Bruce Lee famously said, I can't do it with my own accent, never mind Bruce Lee's. Uh, he famously said, karate is like a steel, steel bar. Whack! You hit them with a steel bar. But kung fu is like a steel bar attached, attached to a chain. And it's like, you know, like, and he made that sign, right? Well, I disagree with him. Karate is like a steel bar attached to a, a steel chain. Everything that we do within karate should be, have a, an element of snap. And this sense of locking your technique out and holding your form, and it's horrible. And it only exists in Shotokan karate. It doesn't exist in any other style of karate. And it comes from that kind of draconian uh, JKA style of militaristic style where you're just marching up and down doing, doing that kind of enforced kihon without ever freeing up from that kihon. So yes, karate, in my mind, should be 100% uh, not 100%, but you should have a large element of, of whip and snap within your karate. Because that's how your body naturally works. I said it before, like everyone thinks that the body is like a, like a, a, you know, a bridge, uh, like made from stones. And you have building blocks, and that's your skeleton. But actually, our, our body's not like that at all. It's like a suspension bridge, like the Golden Gate Bridge, Sydney Harbour, Harbour Bridge. Yeah, it's a suspension bridge, and it's pieces of steel that don't touch each other, but that's suspended by very strong steel girders. And that's, that's what the body's like, because as soon as bone starts touching bone, you get arthritis. That never happens within your body, or should never happen within your body. So our bones are suspended within a mass of ligaments, muscles, and fascia. And actually, they're all the same thing. They all become one, becomes the other, becomes the other. So it's, it's a suspended mass. And it's through those kind of like tensions and, and relaxations that we produce movement. Tensions and relaxations. Okay? Anything else? No? Okay. Okay, guys, the, the, the kids are getting uh, restless, so... Uh... <laughs> 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 uh, so we better finish. Okay, kids, get out of your side! Okay. Okay, ready? Oh.